Thornburg Foundation. Uh, and the Thornburg Foundation is a human humanitarian foundation that has been uh, very generous to the state of New Mexico uh, and the region. Uh, they don't really do the arts. They do a lot of work um, uh, that is focused more on uh, our indigenous community, our Latinx community, uh, water scarcity, poverty, health. Uh, but Garrett Thornburg um, uh, was best friends with uh, Jeff Harner, and Jeff Harner was his personal architect, and he was a wonderful architect here uh, in Santa Fe. Uh, designed the Cocteau Theater right across the street, which is the theater uh, that is owned by George R. R. Martin, uh, writer of the Game of Thrones, who we always see hanging out there. Um, and uh, many houses around town, children's museum. Uh, if you want to learn more about Jeff Harner, Conrad Skinner here uh, was very close friends and he can tell you about it uh, later. Uh, uh, but we are uh, very honored that he has uh, funded this program in memory of a very close friend of his. Uh, and they want to do more with us. And so they're very also excited about Mass Design Group, who's our, key, uh, they're, they're our keynote tomorrow before award night, uh, because they're also already working with Mass Design Group, uh, designing some um, shelters for indigenous women uh, in Gallup, New Mexico. So it's all connecting. And we're very, very lucky that that's happening. So I also want to just mention um, uh, Chris. Cornelius is here, our new chair of architecture in the School of Architecture and Planning. Some of our new circle members are here. Thank you for joining us and more are on Zoom. And a lot of the folks who submitted to the competition are here. They won't find out if they want or not tonight, uh, but uh, um, we'll talk about all of the projects very generally. So Tony, take it away. Thank you, Robert. Um, so before we get started, I wanted to just provide a little bit more information and background on Jeff Harner. Um, his designs have stood at the beacon of architectural creativity and an experimental spirit in Santa Fe from his early practice in 1984 until his untimely passing in 2006. Um, Jeff was raised in Albuquerque and he earned his Bachelor of Architecture degree from Arizona State University in 1977. Uh, he ran a residential design and construction business until opening his office in Santa Fe. Jeff worked organically synthesizing material, cultural, and environmental resources into an architecture of his time. Uh, Jeff created an impressive body of work by fearlessly creating contemporary buildings here in Santa Fe with a degree of risk and extreme creativity. Um, he firmly believed that the continued development of new architectural ideas is the only way to sustain the vibrancy and texture and reality of the community. Um, so this award really goes to honor and inspire um, Jeff Harner's exploratory, exploratory spirit and his skill at guiding clients to follow his path. Uh, and with that, um, we'll get started on uh, introducing the jury tonight. Um, I also want everyone to keep in mind since no one will know the winners until tomorrow evening, so um, uh, it's difficult to refrain from revealing that, but uh, be careful not to allude to too many specifics about who the winner might be. <laughs> Uh, however, the discussion should generate excitement and anticipation for tomorrow night. Um, and without further ado, um, oh, sorry, and just a quick uh, slide on the history um, of the award. So the award started uh, in 2007 with the Contemporary Award for Architecture and remains focused on that award uh, for several years up until 2018 when it expanded to include unbuilt landscape architecture and architecture. Um, and then recently, this last year, we expanded to include um, additional categories for uh, recognizing the New Mexico practice, and then also student awards for both architecture and landscape architecture. Um, and that brings us to today. Um, and so now, just to introduce the jury, uh, the award, uh, the jury for the contemporary architecture in the Southwest um, and outstanding New Mexico designer was uh, Deborah Berkey. From Yale University, she was unfortunately unable to attend tonight. Uh, Dorothy Gibbert from Ohio State University, she's joining us online. Um, and I'll let you all give a brief introduction as well, um, but I'm just going to go through the list right now. Um, Elaine Molinar from Snohetta, is she joining us online? Uh, Ryan Gosen, did I say that? Did I say that? Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, from MIT, 
MIT um, is joining us here in person. Carlos Simonis from Rice University is joining us in person. Uh, Gabriel Diaz Montemayor uh, from the University of Arkansas is joining us in person tonight. And um, those three were the uh, jury for the Unbuilt Architecture and Landscape Architecture Awards. And on the student jury, we have Renee Davis from UC Berkeley joining us online. Uh, Alexandra Jaski uh, from UT Austin. She's currently traveling and unable to join us this evening. And Frederick Fritz Steiner from the University of Pennsylvania sitting next to me here in person right now. Um, and also just to remind everyone, this is just the jury deliberation tonight, um, or the jury roundtable, I should say. Um, and please be sure to join us tomorrow evening at 5.30 at George Pearl Hall, and also be available online if you would like to join find out who the winners are. And also, more especially to see the lecture from Mass Design Group. Um, so I will hand it over to the jury and I'll let, let's just go right down the table and you can give a little bit more of a introduction to each of you and um, start there. And I think we will go through um, and focus on the specific uh, design categories after that. I start. Um, yeah, we can, we can go that way. Yeah, let's start with Fritz and we'll work our way towards this. Okay, yeah, I'm um, Fritz Steiner, and then I returned to Philadelphia. My third time in Philadelphia. And before that, I was 15 years uh, at the University of Austin, where I was teaching the School of Architecture. And before that, Arizona State, Colorado. Uh, the one thing I, I think, uh, if I look back, uh, after I left Philadelphia the first time and moved to the Pacific Northwest, uh, wherever I've been, I don't know, kind of Johnny Appleseed or Lancy Architecture Program, because wherever I've been, we started a Lancy Architecture Program, first in Washington State and then. We rebooted the University of Colorado, then Arizona State, and then they hired me at UT Austin. They said, uh, Can you help us start a landscape architecture program? I said, sure. Uh, why haven't you done it? And they said, Well, you know, Texas AM has a landscape architecture program. What did that ever stop the University of Texas? Because they had I went over to College Station, I bought friends over there, they said, We've been waiting for UT to do a landscape architecture program for decades without time. Uh, state of Texas needs to Anyway, between the 10, they already had a landscape architecture program, so I couldn't create a new one. Uh, so we found the Park Center for you know, in college. So it's yeah. yeah, hi, Carlos. Um, my name is Carlos Aquinas, and I, I do the Northwest Northwest Building Park. My school of architecture, and I run my own Houston for seven years. And uh, I'm very pleased to be here with my colleagues and to you know, discuss uh, this interesting. I'm the Associate Professor of Architecture and Urbanism at uh, IC, before that at the University of Michigan. Um, I'm also on the Department of Practice for Design and Earth, uh, which thinks of questions of broader environmental consciousness and communications related to architecture. So, possibly, and eventually, possibly, close to the other category as a way of imagining how something that for now on paper can still have an impact on the functional environment more broadly in the world. And we have to survey the recognition of the value of the sign. And I think that's partially part of our conversation, our fantastic conversation we had regarding the award is the role of the in kind of a career trajectory and maybe particularly for the unbuilt awards and then eventually becoming a built project one day. So we hopefully come back to that later. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Gabriel Montemando, and I am an MBA for my PhD in design education and an associate professor in Washington. Uh, before that, I was with Fritz at UT 
Joseph. Uh, and before that, I was at Arizona State University. And before that, I, I, I actually uh, came down to Mexico, Chihuahua. And uh, I started coming to New Mexico because of the uh, person here in the audience, uh, Professor Lisa Fernandez. Uh, we organized joint studios together about 10 years ago. That takes me to being back here to this last year uh, in Mexico feels very, you know, very, very, very close to home. And uh, it's been great. Uh, it's been honor to be here in May the last four hours. Thank you. Did you say me? You. you. <laughs> Okay, I, I, it's very difficult to hear, so I, I, um, I actually didn't hear much of the introductions. My name is Renee I Davids. Um, Ray, um, can you all just speak a lot louder? Because it, it's, it's difficult for us to hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, you're perfect. My name is Renee Davids. <laughs> um, I, I teach at the University of California at Berkeley. Um, and I'm very pleased to be virtually here. I used to teach uh, at UNM over 25 years ago, and I've got very, very fond memories of being there. Um, I, um, I teach uh, studios on urban design and architecture. Uh, I do seminars, again, on urban design and landscape. Uh, I've been, I just recently wrote a book on um, topography and cities in Latin America. And uh, I'm starting to write a new book uh, again on topography and mines uh, in Europe and Latin America. Um, I'm very pleased to be here and pleased to see everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dorothy? Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm Dorothée Ambert. I am the director of the Norton School at The Ohio State University. I do have an Ohio accent, but I'm originally from France. Um, I used to be at Berkeley. So it's nice to be here because I can see old friends, former students, uh, old acquaintances and people I haven't met before. So it's really nice. Um, I um, trained as an architect and a landscape architect, but I was teaching in landscape architecture for a while, first at Harvard. Then I started a program at uh, the University of um, Washington in St. Louis. And then I took over the landscape architecture programs at the Ohio State University. And now I'm director of the school, which has three disciplines, architecture, landscape architecture, and city and regional planning. I have a long attachment to New Mexico, but it's a sentimental attachment. Uh, and I wish I were uh, with you uh, in Albuquerque slash Santa Fe. But it's nice to see you all. Thank you. Um, Hi, everyone. It's nice to be here, although I wish I were actually there with you. Uh, I'm an architect, and I grew up in El Paso, Texas, so in the southwest uh, region, and I'm very familiar with New Mexico. I've spent a lot of time there growing up. Um, I've been with Snohetta since we started our company in 1989, and after living many years in northern Europe and now many years here in New York in the northeast I still consider myself a desert rat, so I'm I'm uh, very happy to be uh, participating in in this jury. Thank you. Um, and what I think would be good to do now is just go through um, the different categories and have those juries speak to uh, you know, starting with the student award. We'll kind of go in order what we we'll do tomorrow night, okay? As far as we will go, but start with the jury with the student awards. Um, and share some of your thoughts uh, regarding uh, the entries and, and any trends that you saw, um, and uh, you know, just learn a little bit more about what you learned from your deliberation process. Oh, yeah. 
And uh, so the student award jury is Renee and Frederick and Alexander is out this evening. So I'll let we'll talk about the entries. Want me to go first, Renee, or you? Uh, you should go first. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to talk loud. Um, what do the, the, Renee and I have been on the jury both last year and this year. So um, I thought it was important to be here in person for a couple reasons. One is, um, and we were doing the student awards, and I think going through them the last two years, just remind, and just to how hard it has been for students. Uh, it's been a really, it's been rough for everybody, uh, but um, you can ma imagine being an architecture or landscape architecture student the last two years. I mean, what we had to do with studios and so on. So I, I just want to make a shout out for the students for, you know, sticking with it. Uh, and then, you know, going above and beyond by entering, you know, this competition because um, and so, uh, shout out to the students. I, I um, also, um, it's a marvelous award. And now I'll just retreat into landscape architecture for a moment. Um, last year, I, I, we were surprised there were more uh, entries. This year, there were more and they were better. Uh, but I, I, I hope there's more, even more next year. Um, but in the discussions that uh, Renee and Alexandria and I had, uh, there's sort of a, a dilemma that comes up uh, that I've experienced before uh, with juries that are mostly architects looking at landscape architecture. And it, it's, um, that it, there's, a, there's a gap in understanding. And um, I think, um, I don't know how to, bridge that exactly, except um, the landscape architecture entries were very strong on analysis. And I think the architects on the jury didn't find them as strong in design. We, we do have one, I think, uh, that will be unveiled, and maybe two that I, I think are stronger. But it, it, if, if I was to advise the students, um, it would be, uh, think about who your the audience is as a jury, and you may have one landscape architect, but you're going to have more architects. And how do you communicate uh, with them? And I think if uh, I think it's very important that uh, landscape architects know how to communicate to architects, and so that was um, that's something that the students. Um, uh, and, you know, I think there's some work to do uh, for all of us who are. Teaching landscape architects, um, and uh, uh, but overall, um, there was a, both years. Also, the idealism, um, the uh, uh, the addressing, you know, two of the biggest issues um, imaginable: climate change and and how uh, architects and landscape architects. Uh, respond to climate change, and that and the students, you can see, they were very concerned about that, and it came out in uh, a lot of the work. And the other is um, addressing the issues of uh, race and inequality, and social justice, uh, and those were also uh, impressively present in the student work. Uh, and I, 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 it's been uplifting this next generation. Uh, looking at how um, their work uh, can somehow uh, start to address these uh, really important issues. So that's my four cents. Renee? Um, Fritz, you've said everything I would have said myself, so I'm not sure what to add other than um, you brought up the issue of the landscape. Um, entries. And for me, that was uh, between us also the sort of uh, most important moment in, in some ways, because the discussion, I found the discussion really interesting. I, I Even though I'm an architect, I like to think I'm really sensitive to landscape issues. In fact, I, I do teach an architecture and landscape 
uh, seminar. And um, like, I, I, I do agree with Fritz that um, the landscape entries seem very sensitive in relation to um, sort of uh, issues of uh, sustainability and uh, the environment. Um, and they were particularly sensitive to those issues. Um, my, or the slight difference, I, I mean, I don't know whether it was difference, but uh, Fritz explained to me that um, when I complained about the fact that I didn't think there was enough of a spatial um, sort of interest, it was mainly about um, ecology and sustainability and uh, global warming and so on. Um, he told me that um, that was how landscape architects were being trained these days. And um, at that level, I actually don't have a lot of experience other than occasionally going to Berkeley uh, reviews. And I, I think at Berkeley, it's mixed. It depends on whose review you go to. Um, but some of, some of my colleagues in the landscape department are more interested or are as interested in ecological issues as they're interested in spatial issues. Um, and it's true that others are not that interested in the spatial issues. Um, but it made me, that little exchange we had made me think for the next two or three days about um, what that meant for me. and. Uh, I think I'm still, I mean, I don't know whether it's the fact of being an architect. I, I, I think it's an important thing for landscape architects to consider as well. But I, 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 would, um, I would like to join you in, in saying that it's, um, it's very special times. The students have gone through, at least at Berkeley, where again, I, I have a very direct experience. They've gone through very difficult times and I was impressed by the quality of all the entries um, and it was really nice to see. Um, there seemed to be real enthusiasm and the, the winners were particularly sensitive and, and well resolved. Um, I, um, I'm not sure it's, it was a pleasure actually last year and this year to be with you. Um, and I, I, again, I repeat that the exchange made me think for a long time. Um, and I, maybe it's a piece com of conversation for the jurors in general. Um, so I, I, I think, um, is Alexandra is not here I'd, or is she? She's not. I'd, okay. Um, I think I, I don't have anything much more to add. Um, it was, it was, it was as much of a pleasure as last year. I, I, I would like to say that I, I think it would be really nice to have more entries, both in architecture and in landscape. And we mentioned that last year with talking about um, how to advertise the program better. I'm not sure, COVID probably didn't help, um, but there didn't seem to be many more and maybe there were somewhat less entries than last year. And it's it's a pity because I think it's a great program. Yeah, that's definitely something that we're working on and we'll continue the conversation to try and figure out how to get more entries. I think a part of it might have been coming off of the last couple of years. There was a lot of, um, I think everyone's just trying to keep their head above water as they're re-entering uh, re the, the real world out of virtual world. So, um, but, but thank you for those comments. And, and I think we'll move on next to the jury for the Professional Unbuilt Architecture and Landscape Architecture Awards. So that's uh, Reina, Carlos, and Gabrielle. First of all, uh, like Fritz and Rene, it's, it's great to be back a second time. And last year we had a wonderful discussion and we uh, heard about the series of projects that you have been uh, you've seen or perhaps even forgotten the three or four that has been developed and great to make them uh, known. So I thought that was one of the great characteristics and 
aspects of this award. Uh, this year, the three of us were a little bit uh, disappointed that we had less entries than we had uh, presumed we would have. And, and, and I don't know if that means that the on build projects are fewer since everybody's now building back again, or you know, new things are happening. And I hope that's a good sign that it wasn't uh, as uh, auspicious for us. Uh, but the projects we saw, we debated uh, extensively, gave each, each entry uh, its accorded and in time. And I think we, we will explain that perhaps in more specifics tomorrow. But, but I, I think the only thing I would like to add is that I was fascinated by this idea of a build landscape work, you know, because uh, my Dorote, my, my, I'm not from Texas, I, well, I have a Texas accent, but um, I am actually from Costa Rica, where I grew up in understanding the landscape uh, builds itself in spite of the human effort. And so I always find it fascinating to speak about on-built landscape architecture. Um, on-built architecture is perhaps closer to my heart. So as I know that many projects often are built so they develop a, a kind of a, a patience with that and a sense of wisdom. But, but, but I always thought the landscape is fascinating to me. I always have envy landscape architects because the moment they start their work, if it's well designed, it gets better and better and better, and it keeps growing. And you know, at times in architecture these days, we seem to build so fast that the opposite happens. The fertilization or the, the nutrients are not there to sustain it more than the cycle. And that's something that obviously does not concern this, this award, but it's something that is always present. You know, in the movies. So I think that's a pretty nice way. Options for, and I took sorry, I took that liberty since I was last year. So no, no. you're, I mean, your experience was invaluable in a kind of a smooth transition and in us picking up the conversation. And I think, uh, I would definitely follow up on your next point in terms of advertising within other schools, within AIA chapters, within kind of just to because it's we were saying very few are the awards that are one generous in the sense of also recognition, not just a trophy or a piece of paper, like there's a, an actual value, but there's also a question of value that you were thinking of, which is what do we want to celebrate? Who are the clients we want to be kind of foregrounding? And for the architecture category, we had many projects that were thinking of pedagogic spaces. So the experiences of various age group, the sensibility of spaces of education, I think was was very much there. And uh, that was one of the kind of almost programmatic commonalities uh, uh, across the, the projects that we've seen. Granted, the, the gender scopes diverge significantly in terms of uh, you know, expertise and, 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 and development, but there, there was an attention to, I think, the spirit of experimentation and creativity, which I think resonates very strongly with the mission of the award. And that you can you can tell maybe partially because of the program, or maybe that's why they were doing the award. But you can tell that these schools were at least having one specific kind of experimental uh, issue or zone or space that they were developing through these projects. So that resonated. I think the you know the, the landscape project we felt could be you know this is where the potential could be much more developed. I mean, not least here where even the kind of the ratio of the experience of architecture to landscape, like architecture is your small protagonist in an otherwise larger project um, of landscape and habitation, the kind of some of the questions that we were thinking is kind of these layers of the project of the landscape. When do you start telling, when do you start telling the stories of the various species, the topographies of the land, and how can one be sensitive to the uh, the longer history of landscape transformation in the region. Well, it's always, uh, you know, it, it may be that uh, in some way, uh, on built landscape architecture is that they are uh, different uh, that one, and it is common zone as well, different uh, to architecture. Uh, given that 
the process is not there, right? Uh, or you know, you try to explain the process, but uh, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't happen, but in the end, it's a representation of the process, right? Uh, what you find. Uh, and I think that uh, in, in, in this particular context, so what I what I do think is happening in the uh, submissions that we review is there is uh, uh, an attention to what I think is also part of the mission of uh, uh, place-based, uh, culture-based, uh, uh, landscape-based uh, approaches. Uh, with regards to landscape, of course, this is uh, one of the uh, one other unique and sublime region in the United States, uh, but not only that, you know, a place where there is a convergence of different cultures uh, throughout uh, millennia, and that's that's important. I think uh, it's important to see that uh, in the projects there was a, an attention to uh, Native American cultures, uh, to history, right? Traditions and both the, the uh, maybe not very explicitly, but uh, hints to the uh, sublime uh, qualities of, of the landscapes of the uh, states sharing the same corner. Right? Um, but I would echo that as well. You know, I think that's, that's a fantastic opportunity to keep the, keep the program growing, uh, given uh, its, its potential to. Promote and disseminate uh, uh, architecture, and I will speak uh, from my landscape architectural perspective, which is what I teach. Uh, now, in particular, uh, continue to disseminate landscape architecture uh, more and more. Thank you. Um, and then, lastly, the jury for the Contemporary Architecture Award. So, Dorothy and Elaine. Yeah, <laughs> I think like like everyone else, we we also wish that we had been able to see more entries. Um, it's you know it becomes challenging to spot the trends the the fewer there are. But I don't know. I, I think we observed a, a lot of uh, doing a lot with a little. You know, there is a an aspect of restraint in terms of material choices and color palettes and. Uh, using some uh, traditional typologies and, you know, addressing uh, extremes of uh, extreme weather conditions that, you know, you often find in this part of the country. So uh, I think that that was uh, nice to see. Uh, and really, I, I think a, lo a lot of the work that we saw had a, um, seemed to pay close attention to shade and shadow to light and light. Uh, in, in a very nice way. One observation I made about the submission itself was that there were there were um, there was a concept statement and a narrative statement, and I think there's there perhaps there were there was a little bit of ambiguity. They were uh, not clearly distinct from each other, and sometimes language was repeated. So I think it would be helpful to to have a more um, specific request about what you want to see in those two narratives. Thank you. Yes, um, I echo what Elaine said about the, the number of entries. It was really nice, in a sense, to travel um, to the southwest through these projects for me. Um, I would say that perhaps I would pick up the conversation or parts of the conversation I heard because some of the people I don't hear uh, that well when they're further apart uh, from the from the mic, I guess, but the conversation between landscape and architecture and in a sense, um, I feel that the the landscape of the Southwest or some of the entries we had were, were in New Mexico um, is such a strong landscape that I feel that it's almost impossible to judge a building without judging its attention to context, you know, how it deal with, how it deals with, with shade, uh, with, uh, with water, uh, with um, connection to the views. And in a sense, I wish that in the narrative, there was more 
that told us in the narrative and in the site plan, we saw very few, you know, the site plans were kind of a little bit reduced, um, that we had more of a sense about, uh, you know, the, the connection to the ground, the connections to the neighborhood, how people really approach this, this, these buildings and, um, uh, you know, the, the, the whole mechanism of the views, it's almost like, you know, the people who deal with these strong landscapes forget that they're, you know, to us, they're absolutely spectacular. And I feel like I can, I can, I can hear and I want to read more about them. And at the same time, they're almost taken for granted. And so the, the argument I would make, because we have few entries, I would suggest that actually we gang together landscape and architecture entries in the bill categories and, and just look at the way that they're uh, dealing with this, you know, this strong site and this strong landscape. Um, I would I would also, you know, um, point out that the conversation that we had with Elaine and, and Deborah also revolved on, you know, the particular moment that we're judging these projects in. And so when you find yourself looking at you know, a uh, uh, community center, for instance, in an underserved neighborhood of, of uh, a city, you know, where the median uh, income is probably below $25,000 versus a really beautiful house, you start, you know, having a sort of shift that happens in the way you're evaluating the projects. And we started having this conversation about, you know, the, the, the necessity for architecture to really start or not start, but continue to um, have a strong uh, impact, not only on the ecological, on the spatial context, but also on the social context. So I would say that, you know, those are kind of the things that, that I took out of out of conversation, this kind of relationship between building and context and how it's sometimes it's presented as sort of object, uh, you know, again, going back to Renee's argument about the, the spatial qualities, I would say that it's also something that you can expand uh, further into the landscape and really look at them together as opposed to separately. And perhaps the distinction would be, you know, between built and unbuilt or between public and, and private. Mm -hmm. um, Those are very great comments. I, and I think that might be something we should definitely explore more in the future is thinking that, you know, how these categories are set up and I can see, you know, how that could be incredibly challenging to look at those different types of projects because it's so very different in the sense of, of who they're serving. Um, uh, but I, I'd like to open it up to the rest of the jury. Do you have questions for each other uh, in regard to um, you know, what you just heard in regard to the different categories and what you saw. Um, where is the mic? <laughs> I think it's somewhere up there. <laughs> and we can go over the TV. Far away from the microphone yeah. or next yeah. to the microphone? Yeah. So it's up there. So yeah, somewhere up by the TV. Yeah, somewhere. It's in the camp. Yeah. Oh. What's that? Yeah. I can jump in with a few thoughts just based on what we've heard. And and that is that you know the the award program began um, as a award program that focused on New Mexican contemporary architecture uh, to celebrate the legacy of Jeff Harner. Uh, and already, as you can imagine. Um, over time, uh, I mean, this is a, 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 a large state uh, with a very small population. Uh, and there were cases where <laughs> some projects were built by firms abroad, site Santa Fe down the street uh, was a shop um, um, project and they won one year. So there were cases where other firms would, or firms outside of New Mexico would enter, but it was still very much um, a New Mexican uh, um, uh, production. And I proposed to the board of Jeff Arner of, of the Thorburg Foundation that we expand and we begin to think of the Southwest as sort of this larger uh, context. And, and I'm still grappling with the idea of the four corner states because that in itself, I think has a lot of, uh, you know, co uh, settler colonial ideas and maybe that's not where we should be. Uh, and, and just thinking about the landscape of the region. 
Um, so I'm thinking, you know, we, we can always expand and we can always continue to grow. Uh, there, there can always be um, some awards that are still for New Mexicans or for this region. Um, so I, I would love to thoughts on that from the jury, uh, both on the concept of, or are thinking around how do we think about these regional ideas around uh, terms like the Southwest or this, this part of the world? Uh, and do we need to put parameters on this, um, on this competition? Is that absolutely necessary? And there are some folks here uh, like Conrad who've been um, involved with this from the very beginning who helped establish this. Uh, so that there's, you know, I, I'd love to just hear kind of all of the different ideas around how this competition could continue to evolve. I do, I do believe that just coming back into face-to-face -face and out of the uh, pandemic, that that was um, an unforeseen force uh, on the entries, uh, but still sort of open to thinking about the competition. So I remember this well, award started as Northern New Mexico. <laughs> no outside Northern New Mexico are targets. And the uh, former, well, I actually put it this fall to model his office for. Uh, former, uh, you know, he saw Jeff as an unrecognized outlaw in the face of, you know, the sort of regionalism that can be good, but can also be extremely confining and hacky. And Jeff just kind of stood out as somebody who could be an example of, of a designer and an architect who consistently, well, it's amazing that, as I said in the little blurb, he found clients who he could cultivate to follow his way of doing things. And Thornburg was one of those. But um, gradually, it's <laughs> gotten mastering, I think, in the sense that it's gotten faster, it's become somewhat diluted. Um, not that that's a bad thing, but um, I think Gabrielle said something that touches on sort of important to me, and that is the um, ecological and demographic similarities of our states. And um, there's sort of, a, in the sense of Robert Smithson, I'm a big Smithson fan, there's, there's an ongoing um, ecological entry here <laughs> that a lot of architecture tries to ignore. Just read about what's happening with Lake Mead with how water in Arizona. And all four of the four corner states kind of contributes to the Colorado River. They all contribute. And a few of them get all their water from the Colorado River. So it's and not to mention the part that goes to LA. So there's some you know, sort of creeping catastrophes going on that don't necessarily get recognized. Well, not to mention the Rio Grande or Rio Bravo as well. Yeah, right? which Rio is Bravo also Rio Bravo. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> which, uh, so, a couple of years ago was also subject of uh, the people died uh, in Mexico, people were killed by the military because of uh, the fight for water uh, resulting from the agreement with the mm -hmm. United States and Mexico. Yeah. The Continental Divide, there could be a storm on the Continental Divide that will drop water into the Atlantic Ocean and into the Pacific Ocean. That's a vast concept. <laughs> Doesn't the, the desert southwest includes uh, northern Mexico, parts of Texas, and a tiny bit of California, in addition to the Four Corners area, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it would be nice to kind of think of it without political borders, political boundaries to the competition. Yeah, I, 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 like, I, I wonder if you like to 
propose that we keep the whole four corners and try to take uh, revealing as a, as, a, as a theme the idea that the four states, four regional states, share this common characteristic and that they're really one, that the end four regions, but one region that shares this quest for survival through water, through ice cream. And I think that being in Santa Fe always reminds me that there is a there is a, a perhaps a romantic idea of landscape in Santa Fe that houses disappear and they have up that they disappear in the mountain. And then you see this tribal metal roofs that are no longer allowed. So you realize that there is a romance with maintaining and respecting the land, but that doesn't guarantee the damage is done. So the fact that four corners are sharing the same course of development. In one corner there's one climate, in another one there's another climate. And you haven't defined common ground in those four corners. So it seems to me that by expanding the, by including the four states, the conversation can be broader. Both, both the romantic aspect of landscape but more critically this this larger picture that affects us all. The effect that we as humans have on that aspect. We have limited it, it to the schools of architecture in the four corner states. Uh, so that may be a hindrance. Uh, and maybe it's just open to any student, uh, you know, anywhere that's studying in this area. Yeah. You know, then, then we'd have a lot of students. <coughs> I like the idea that the knowledge about the region does not necessarily is not necessarily kind of uh, produced from within the region, but it's an incentive for uh, still the, the 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 award to operate as a platform to recognize, encourage this conversation, um, all while possibly maintaining the New Mexico award if that maintains a legacy to the reason for the establishment of this award. So I think, uh, I mean, I probably would echo uh, a, a, a kind of a, either a, a watershed or a regional attribute that allows you to begin to unearth the specific, um, almost aspirational desires of the award by beginning to outline uh, how that region is understood or what might be some of the issues in that relationship between landscape and architecture to actually help steer the conversation in that direction. Because, you know, uh, uh, recognition of work is then, and recognition of excellence is then a stimulus for more excellence and more work. So um, if the award kind of invites either, uh, either thematic concerns on water or on other, it doesn't need to be thematic, but if it begins to outline in what is expected to be addressed within questions of landscape, Either transformations over time, uh, 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 etc. Then I think you know it's it's inviting. Sometimes the thought might be there in the project, or that people might begin to think to gear their narrative and their design towards addressing these issues more explicitly. I, I find myself in a very funny position between Carlos and Elaine because uh, I really love the, the Southwest flavor of the of the uh, awards and uh, and especially with the student awards because they all were from schools in this region that that sense of this place is very very strong so i'm thinking about uh, you know what elaine said about what it, the southwest and, and then i'm thinking well the, Thing that in my mind, there's the four corners, and then there's John Wesley Powell. Uh, and, you know, of course, John Wesley Powell's vision for the the arid west was not Jeffersonian and not corners and not squares, but um, watersheds, drainage basins, which uh, were sensitive, more sensitive to the indigenous people, and uh, also uh, recognized the Mormon settlement that was that was starting to occur mostly in Utah, but certainly in Arizona as well. So it's a tricky thing. I mean, um, it, 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 is it uh, the you know, sort of Jeffersonian um, 
geometry or uh, so I, 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 I it, how do you, I, I really, really, really love that it's focused on the Southwest because I think it does go back to that. There's a, I think there's, you know, a, a, a powerful regionalism in design that exists here that is undervalued. Uh, and I think it's somewhat ironic that most of us, even though we, we, we lived in this region for some time, I thought it's just very clever to have People from outside looking at um, uh, at the award because it's very uh, gratifying and it, 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 and I think also um, inspiring. So, uh, Chris and then Mr. Cousins. Um, interesting discussion. <clears throat> Maybe I'm kind of old fashioned. I've been working here. Um, off and on for 35 years, so I'm kind of coming at it from the New Mexico perspective. Um, and also watching this, this jury, this prize evolve since it began. Um, and in the early days, um, it was kind of very clear, I'm not saying that this new discussion isn't, isn't where things should go, but it was very clear that working in New Mexico is it, it, a very different place to work. Yeah, it's a different place with the landscape, the culture and the economy. And what was interesting were outside jurors coming here and speaking back to us about how remarkable it is that we're creating things and we're doing it differently than they were doing in other places. And they would sort of be a sort of a mirror or a lens on, on, on our work here. Um, not to say that we need, this needs to continue, but I, I don't hear that discussion that much anymore. And I'm referring to previous juries too, where they're looking at work and saying, this work could have only been produced here because of the place and the influence of the culture. Um, and many people say they value the Southwest in, you know, influence and impact, um, but making this place and people being able to be part of this, again, I'm, I'm not trying to be exclusionary, I'm just trying to reiterate the fact that there was some really strong, you know, place-based architecture being made here um, DNA in this award originally, and how can you make contemporary architecture in such a strong, you know, such a strong flavor? I, think I have two comments. One, I was an intern, so I'm not sure that anyone knows, but um, I was 30 some plus years in Colorado. So one of the reasons I entered is because it's a four state region. Number two, um, I learned about it only about three days before I entered, based on the advertisement from the Albuquerque Bay. And it was just, just happenstance that I decided to throw my patent away. That's number two. number two. But I basically also believe that the common thread, because I was from the area where the Rockies are the Rockies, and the desert is here where I live now. Um, and I've been coming here for over 20 years, um, is I think that there's a, that common thread that you mentioned is water. Everyone's mentioned one way or another. And, um, that idea of, of this idea of integrating water um, and, you know, put back great projects like the Alhambra, small water, the big water, little water. But I think the idea of a theme is, is kind of interesting for uh, even integrating local contemporary architecture. I would say most that I've seen have water in some small, big fashion. But, um, but I think getting more people uh, is a challenge. Uh, it leads best with most of Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with what I have heard. Uh, I think the idea of expansion is, is interesting, but I also, my, my thought when that was being discussed was similar to what Chris was, Chris, correct, yeah, was discussing, which was that, you know, as, as a local firm, we were actually um, less or kind of more intimidated about joining the competition with the fact that it was much broader. 
we are now, you know, in our in our mindset a little bit is the, the, the economics, uh, the economic differences throughout the region. Uh, you know, so you could see it as like, well, we have these you know, firms in Denver and Boulder, Colorado, Phoenix, you know, you can see these great transactions on the provider side of that region. They have you know, quite a bit of um, budget I know budget's not everything in this business. Uh, I think we had, I think we had two solid projects that we were considering and entering, but at the same time, you know, and, and then also to be honest, which might be true for a lot of other firms, that we were just very busy and so kind of dedicated the time to a, a very thoughtful um, presentation, very thoughtful submission was something that we just didn't necessarily have time. So I, I, I think it's a great thing because the economy is going. Well, but it's a lot of work right now, so that's a good thing. But I mean, it was also a consideration. But yeah, you know, I, I don't know if you know, broader is better. I, I kind of like the idea. I love, I love the idea of getting rid of the geographic lines that are kind of that's arbitrary in some way. I mean, think about the state or think about the landscape. Um, I kind of like it because you still have that idea and have to define the region for the terms of the state. Um, but that's just some food for thought. I don't know. If and necessarily going broader is going to give you more entries, where being more of something local, where you're getting this great, you know, this great jurors of economics right against um, of some local work and giving us criticism of their opinions um, is another way of thinking about it. Too. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, what we, what we want to get out of it is, I guess, the main question, like what is it a knowledge base? Is it is it um, uh, I don't know exposure to projects we get, we would have never seen before? But I grappled with this because I came from Texas Tech, El Paso, and you know the minute it got bigger, but not big enough to include my old school, where I know student projects would be amazing, uh, and and our faculty there and practitioners in El Paso would 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 you know have a lot to contribute. I stopped before that. Uh, as much as I wanted to include them, I was trying to figure out what is still sort of um, a reflection of the legacy of where it started. Right. To me, to me, just my first impression would be that El Paso actually would have been a little bit more of an example of the children. And, and any of the famous El Paso is closer to San Diego than it yeah. used to. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I know. What do we call it? The Four Corner States and El Paso. <laughs> and what is? <laughs> but I, I like this budget geographic uh, lenses. Uh, right. You know, when I'm the you know, uh, you see, well, we get to know each other so much. You know, mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe that's another way of thinking about it. But just, uh, I'm, I'm just uh, amazed at uh, what, what you said earlier. I didn't get your name. I'm, I'm Chris. Chris, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm now doing really a small house because I'm affected with mine. And I'm learning so much. I'm so fascinated by by the elemental confrontation one faces uh, working here. Something so powerful like orientation becomes the greatest discovery. You know, how one degree can affect the pleasure of the mood or how one swell. You know, these marvelous things that one learns. And I can't imagine people coming here with the hubris of the imperative that they're going to impose some kind of architecture. So I think the lessons that were that are instituted here to listen to them are quite powerful. And I would, I think we, we look for that in, in the entrance. We were always looking for that memory of place, which is what ultimately justifies an architecture of that. Yeah, and, I, and that's, I was waiting to hear that from the jury, and I heard very little discussion about place, this place. Well, and maybe because you're not talking about the project. Yeah. Yeah. That's so why you're being, you're being, I got that. But that's why I was waiting to hear. You have to be politics. Well, we, we talked when you were talking about right. the traditional expansion. And I know I mentioned West Texas, because again, I think I'm kind of echoing what Elaine was saying that, you know, regionally, it, it all addresses similar issues. So someone like uh, Barry Wellen, right, who is a fantastic firm in Midland, 
uh, and why he's doing work that I think is in the spirit of honor, right, should somehow <coughs> place, again, echoing this, I'm carving out a language and a voice in this region that's really progressive over these things. So uh, for Dust in Tucson, right, I mean, they're doing the project here, well, that's, that's great, uh, but they wouldn't be recognized, right? If they're doing this. Well, no, actually, they want to see Oh, they want to shoot. Yeah, they're there. Right. Right. Exactly. So <laughs> that is, I think, I think it's really great that he did this. I, I think, you know, and, and I think to the, to the testament of that there might be better work out there that has better better budgets. I, I, I'm leaving it to the jury to, to decipher the work that's coming out that really has essence and has essentiality to the things that we are talking about that are representative of Jeff Arner. Mm -hmm. Right, rather than this is a great big budget and it has all of this like, materiality and whatnot, right? It, I hope that's not going to be necessarily where the text really is about looking at um, that, that condition of architecture that the sort of work is worked out. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a tricky thing. I actually, so on my arrival, I, I founded one new award program, which is the On the Brink Award, a book award program because we were sitting on a huge uh, J.B. Jackson endowment that had not been, been used. Um, and, and then we expanded this one. And with the J.B. Jackson Award the, on the brain, you know, that was the question. How do you, and how do you um, celebrate all the things that J.B. Jackson was, but open it up to, you know, any imaginable author that is not like a J.P. Jackson person. So we focused on things like the accessibility uh, to his text. I mean, he was an anti-intellectual. You know, he wrote for the people. He um, was- Public scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what was that? Maybe more like a public scholar. That is he was like a public scholar, yeah. yeah. Public scholar. He, he was pushing <laughs> yes. boundaries, yeah. And he was- um, exploring and looking in places that nobody else was looking at. So we started to codify all of those things and we said, okay, that's the criteria um, in his honor. Uh, but, you know, we, 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 we would have said, it has to be someone who's writing about ordinary landscape. I mean, there is an award out there like that that has his name, uh, which is why we call the Mars on the break. Uh, but so that's been the, the thing to grapple with. But this is very helpful just to get a really good sense of um, where we're coming from. I'm so happy that you're here, Conrad. Uh, we just had lunch today. Uh, <laughs> you, you made it tonight. But to get, to, to begin to, you know, I, I think it's an evolving project too. I'm not, I'm not certain we've landed where we want it to be, uh, but we will. Um, and I, I think we're kind of at the end of our hour too. So maybe just some wrapping up comments on, uh, uh, some things to look forward to tomorrow uh, when the winners are announced uh, and any other final thoughts from the jurors. I look forward to knowing people behind the company. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to be surprised. <laughs> will they be presents from? Some of them will, yeah. Well, I think one bit of advice like to highlight the, the value of the of the award, not so much in terms of winning or losing, but the idea that it is uh, an opportunity to highlight the region that, that we're all responsible to bring forward the best qualities of design, whether it is architecture or landscape, uh, so that it, it casts the more different from the more typical professional awards. So it's more about caring about the region, mm -hmm. this architecture, this landscape, unify the whole region as such. And it can be exemplary, I mean, the same way that other parts of the world uh, are unified for which the common goal a river can share, a mountain base can share. So this, this land of enchantment is not limited to Mexico, mankind, the entire land. So that's just a bit of a reflection.
I was, uh, I, I'm not sure I understood. I'm, one can't hear very well, but there seemed to be a lot of conversation about um, sort of using uh, fancier materials and um, maybe the projects in New Mexico not being able to compete with those outside the immediate area uh, because of fancier materials and bigger budgets. Um, that struck me as a little odd in that um, when I lived in New Mexico, the modesty seemed to be one of the values, the modesty of the architecture. Um, and I, rather than seeing it as sort of poorer and lesser, it seemed to be one of the most powerful qualities of um, the environment in New Mexico. Um, so I, I was a little sort of confused by that conversation. And then um, a lot of people were speaking about water and um, which is, it's a big factor in the New Mexico landscape or the lack of it. But the other thing which always struck me was uh, the notion of time or the sense of time, which seemed to be very different to the sense of time in California, or I never, you know, you just in California, you just seem to live. In New Mexico, I seem to be very conscious of how the time changed and the seasons changed. And to me, that was another very powerful factor about being there. Um, so I, I'm not sure how that translates into architecture very well, but it certainly translates into the landscape. Uh, projects. And I, I just wanted to say that um, I think modesty is a virtue, is not an, a problem, um, at least from my point of view. And I, I love that about New Mexico. I love Rene's you know, invitation for us to think of this uh, radical humility almost as a, not only as a quality, so not only as a corrective measure, but also maybe as an aspiration for other architectural awards, that this is not the, necessarily the stainless steel, you know, the biggest budget, the, the biggest carbon footprint that awards <laughs> you this, but there's a different set of values that are recognized. And I also want to recognize your, your, your efforts in kind of centralizing the role of the university in hosting this conversation. And maybe I hear kind of that desire of how could you maintain specificity by acknowledging that regional configuration, whether, you know, the Southwest or, or, or kind of the, the, the regional continuities along the kind of ge geometric border. And, you know, there was a, a recent event that I thought was inspirational in terms of maybe uh, inviting um, uh, uh, the college to think again of um, maybe it's time for kind of a, a smaller conference with voices on the landscape architecture of the Southwest. Maybe they're happening, but some of those uh, could be used as a place to launch, a, 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 say, a student competition or invite a, a set of teams. Maybe it could be a funded uh, event to invite a set of teams of practices that are recognized in the region to come together and think through a shared practice. Like I think of it, you know, at, at the, as a pedagogic con convening also, but that could stage some some voices from practice and from scholarship and use that event to maybe launch a year long for the next season, mm -hmm. the year long other student entries, so students can come from different universities. So how can you maintain kind of a local anchor as well as address issues that might be relevant to the broader region? I think it could have a very strong pedagogic work. That's, that's a great idea. And we did think of it, I mean, when we were looking at the schools, we are at the center of all mm -hmm. the other schools. Um, but we also like that, you know, Jeff Harner went to University of Arizona so, so we, we we need to strengthen our tie. Is that right? ASU. ASU. Sorry, I was thinking of Phoenix in my head. Uh, Tempe. Uh, but we need to we need to connect with that school too. Um, mm -hmm. But maybe even just the two schools coming together. Um, just uh, uh, you know, one elaborating on this. It's it's notion the 
not notion, but the reality of the political borders or, or, or states that cleave many other boundaries, uh, watersheds, uh, uh, bioregions, uh, cultures, both present, uh, uh, but uh, also uh, cultures that uh, have been here uh, for a long time. Uh, also present, but also, you know, uh, uh, as a sort of a cultural palisades over time. Um, it, I'm looking at this fantastic map, which maybe you certainly have boundaries for your award, but uh, there, there may be ways to uh, put it forward in, in, in a way that, not that it doesn't happen, because I do think it happened in the project we saw that, uh, that there is a, um, that presence of, of the specific uh, complexity and, and regional or territorial or cultural uh, conditions. But uh, maybe there's, there are some ways to send uh, that pitch, right? That is more explicit. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, this is probably going to sound not very serious, but uh, makes me remember about the South American Soccer Confederation that. Uh, Every so often, they organize a soccer tournaments, and they invite. They have guests from other regions, right? uh, which share certain policy, certain, yeah. certain qualities, right? And maybe as a pilot project, right? What happens if this time around, this other school, this other states, and of course, I'm thinking Chihuahua, Mexico, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were in Juarez, right, for a number of years, yeah. right? uh, for that. And uh, it could be probably a way of testing, testing if, if you know, piloting uh, other, not just uh, inviting others, but also testing the, the, the presence or not, and the, uh, and the potential to um, uh, continue to move forward with certain, certain preoccupations that uh, are certainly shared by, by everyone, regardless of contemporary political boundaries or not. Mm -hmm. I think you're making a really great point. And um, there, until just last year, there used to be a component of the American Institute of Architects called the Western Mountain And they got rid of it. And I, up to the highest levels of the AIA, protested. Not that I thought that I could prevail, but because they were ignoring exactly the things that you're talking about. That this region shares certain water resources, it shares indigenous resources. I did a count of the number of native languages in the Western Mountain region, and it was huge. I forget the number, but it was close to 100 different languages. In the Republic. Just that linguistic richness is something that is a, an important binder. And then the history of colonialization, the, uh, the exploitation of resources is huge and very common among all these states, which included in the WMR, Wyoming, and Nevada. But um, yeah, I think you're, you know, what I'm sort of going on in my head is maybe this is the seed of trying to replace mm -hmm. what the AIA never took advantage of in terms of having a regional consciousness that transcended boundaries and even national boundaries as you suggest. Yeah. Yeah. Of so the, the composition of the jury, I, I've been on few architecture juries, yeah. but it, this is really the essence of what you're trying to express in this in this you know, I've, I've rarely seen multiple mixed landscape architects, right? Oh so, yeah. You know, that interdisciplinary value is critical. And I mean, so this approach that you're talking about, you know, value protection. Oh, sure. Of course. We, we brought the best landscape architects we know. Uh, they're all here. They're in the room. Lord yeah, is I, I, in the little box in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, any final comments from our Zoom jurors? Or anyone on Zoom that didn't? Get to say anything before we close out. 
I don't know, Robert, if you're going to invite me again, but next time I would be in the same room as Carlos so I can hear him. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know where the microphone is here. Yes. <laughs> we'll give them a microphone next time. Any final thoughts, Dorothy? No, I think it was really, it was really uh, fascinating to um, to see, uh, you know, this this effort of, um, you know, sort of outsiders, insiders have this conversation about what qualifies as you know, a local or a landscape derived type of architecture and, and what are the kind of, um, you know, indices that can help us assess, you know, what makes it um, successful or not. I, I would say, I would really, you know, I, I don't know if it would be a more, um, you know, communications and advertising for the prize and maybe doing it every other year to have a bigger, you know, a bigger number of projects that you can that you, you can assess and have a, a, a richer conversation among the jurors or maybe, you know, have smaller groups. That's what I would say in terms of categories, in terms of um, really, you know, connecting the dots in a sense to have a critical mass. But I really enjoyed it. Yeah, me, me too. And I, I, it's unusual and very refreshing to be able, you know, that it, that an award organization would would um, debate and question how and how to make it better. You know, how to make it more and more robust next each time. I think that's that's really wonderful to even have that conversation with the jurors and with others. So thank you. Well, thank you all um, for being here and for giving us so much to think about. Um, we're definitely gonna uh, take every word uh, very seriously and uh, we'll see you all tomorrow night. Hi. <laughs> Bye. 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 See you.